35 years old gentleman had presented with pain and instability of his right knee for last one year following road traffic accident. His examination active coronary test was positive and this is a posterior dry test. You can see that almost grade 3 and the wear stress test in both 0 degree and 30 degrees showed more opening than the normal side almost grade 3 opening. There is a dial test positive opening in wear stress x-ray on the lateral side on the posterior dry stress test x-ray and MRI showed misubstance of tear of PCL and the posterior corner injury. So he had planning to do a arthroscopic single bundle posterior cruciate ligament reconstruction using double semi T graft. This is the medial side of the joint shows normal cartilage, normal meniscus and uh, the opening is minimal so now is, there is no medial sided injury S small cartilage cuffing coming to the lateral compartment you can see this the scope easily swipe through there's a swipe through sign you can see the gap between the meniscus and tibial bone and uh, meniscus and femoral bone this huge opening popliteal tendon is absent indicative popliteal tear also along with uh, LCL. Coming to the intracondylar notch, you can see the sac sign of ACL because of PCL insufficiency. Once you pull up the tibia forward, you can see that ACL is getting turns and taut. That means this patient is having complete posterior cruciate ligament insufficiency. That is the remaining fibers of posterior cruciate ligament by using shaver on the medial portal and my scope is in anterolateral portal as you see in the outside view and I am trying to go between the anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligament and removing the all the fat pad going all the way to remove the keptum to reach the posterior medial compartment. As you see here, there is a opening on the posterior medial compartment, removing the, all the capta and fat pad, you are able to see the posterior medial compartment well. Another way of reaching posterior medial compartment between posterior cruciate ligament and your medial compartment, medial tibia. As you, get that, as you can see here, the scope sli easily slides on between the PCL and the medial compartment. And your needle is inserted from outside in with blindfolded. You can see that through the light source, you can easily identify the spot and insert the needle, or usually around 2 cm away from the posterior medial joint line. Along with the guide of the pin, you can use the 11 mm pin, make a small stab incision, insert the swiping rod, and the 6 mm cannula is inserted so that it is easy when you exchange the scope between posterior medial portal and anterolateral portal. Remaining PCL fibers in the tibial attachment can be easily removed by using shaver coming through the posterior medial cannula. Here I am clearing the all the soft tissues posterior to the tibial attachment of the posterior cruciate ligament. Using soft shaver is more safer. When you are using a aggressive shaver, make sure that the blood is not turning posteriorly. Make sure that it is along with the bone so that you don't damage the neurovascular structures. They are just one centimeter away from the tibial attachment of posterior cruciate ligament. It takes some time to remove and clear all the soft tissues behind the posterior cruciate ligament. Now I switch my scope to the posterior medial portal as you see in the outside view. The view through the posterior medial sh shows the tibial attachment of the remaining posterior cruciate ligament. You can see that some footprint is seen very well. That is the medial compartment, medial meniscus and this is the posterior cruciate ligament. 
here you can see that I am inserting the jig in the outside view. Usually I keep around 65 to 75 mm degrees and you can see that it sits exactly over the PCL attachment. Sometimes if you want to go a little bit deeper, you can use the PCL scoop. Yes, I am doing it here, blindly, uh, bluntly we can dissect that remaining soft tissues so that we can view it better. Once you clear all the soft tissues distal to the attachment of the posterior cruciate ligament, as you see here, I am reinserting my jig through the anteromedial portal. The jig can be in the center of the footprint or slightly lateral to the footprint so that you don't medialize too much of your tibial attachment of posterior cruciate ligament. And uh, through this medial side, where we harvested graft, we are inserting the guide wire. As you see, the resistance is drilling. I am holding the scope on the posteromedial portal, and you can see that guide wire is emerging. That is the advantage of seeing through the posteromedial view. So, you can have a direct visualization of your entering of the guide wire. Then, we can start doing reaming. Here we measure around 10 mm size of the grab. So I am going to start with 8 mm reamer first, then gradually increase to 10 mm. So here we are using 8 mm reamer through the guide wire. So the first reamer is around 8 mm. And again, being through the posteromedial portal, you have a direct access. You can see the tunnel now. So I'm again going to reinsert that guide wire. Again, I'm protecting the PCL, using the PCL scoop to protect the guide wire to migrate in the posterior side. I am, my assistant is inserting 10 mm reamer. through the guide pin. Then you use the shaver through the same tunnel to clear the fat pad at the exit point of the tibial tunnel in the posterior tibia. So tibial tunnel was made. Now we move on to the outside view where you are making a lower anterolateral portal. So here I am planning to do an inside out channel for the femoral side. So I am seeing through the anterolateral portal and clearing all the soft tissues around the PCL. And you can use the van to mark out the anteromedial bundle because here we are planning to do a single bundle PCL reconstruction. So I am going to mark it out with this van helps you to plan your anteromedial bundle in the PCL insertion of femoral side. As you see here, so you have to come from the top uh, from the almost 12 o'clock position. So you may need, here we are planning to put a 10 mm graft. So I am removing and making the footprint area for the anteromedial insertion of guide wire, insertion of the guide wire. Here I am seeing through the anterolateral portal, by using lower anterolateral portal, I am using a 7 mm reamer to keep over the planned footprint for the anteromedial bundle. Through the reamer, I am inserting the guide wire. It also acts as a fulcrum for your guide wire to enter into the femoral side. Once you are done that, I'm happy about that insertion level. You can see that in the center of the anteromedial footprint, I'm changing my scope to the anteromedial portal so that when you work through the lower antero portal, anterolateral portal, it won't damage your scope because we are going to use the reamers now. Here I'm using a 4.5 reamer to use the suspensory fixation. Whether you can use a fixed loop or an adjustable loop, here I'm planning to do an adjustable loop tight rope from the aftex. This 4.5 mm 
drill has also has got a measurement so that you can measure the total tunnel length once you are done that 4.5 then you change into the reamer reamer as i said here it's 10 mm reamer you can start gradual reamer or you can use a, if you are confident about your footprint you can use the directly 10 mm reamer it goes up to 20 to 25 safer to put 25 mm on the femoral side total length of the femur is around 45 here you can see that is the tunnel entry point of the femoral tunnel and clearing all the debris over there you can see that that is the footprint that is the tunnel for your anteromedial reconstruction you can also use a depth gauge if you have doubt about the tunnel length so you can reconfirm it so once i have done the both tibial and femoral tunnels i am inserting the threads through the tibial tunnel for the passage of the graft and i am taking it with the help of the posteromedial portal and dragging it into the joint again i am using the anteromedial portal to take it and bring it in front of the pcl then again i have to take it through the lower anterolateral portal then i insert the spade guide wire through the lower anteromedial sorry lower anterolateral portal and uh, take out that threads through the femoral tunnel here i am using the rounded stem and pin rod to avoid the pillar turn in the posterior tibial side it also helps to facilitate the smooth passage of the graft from the tibia into the joint otherwise the acute angle in the posterior tibia maybe it's it is difficult to deliver the graft so here you can see that you are both blue and white threads from the adjustable loop is coming inside the blue thread is to pull the button and the white thread is going to pull the graft inside as you see here the button is coming inside the joint and uh, button is going outside the tunnel out of the far cortex and flip there you see the mark here that means it has passed out of the first far medial far sorry far cortex of the femoral side and it flipped through now by pulling the white threads our assistant is pulling the white thread you can see that graft is smoothly passing through that is the mark which you made it around 25 that is the final graft in the femoral side that looks good almost occupies the whole anteromedial footprint of the posterior cruciate ligament you can see that sag acl is can be taught by pulling the remaining graft in the tibial side so that helps you to tighten the ACL so that is the normal position of the PCL now you in insert the guide wire for the tibial tunnel and I insert 11 mm biocomposite screw in the tibial tunnel so I am seeing through the posteromedial portal so you can see through the posteromedial portal and you can see the exit of the tip of the composite screw you can also add additional fixation with the suture post always i do a hybrid fixation on the tibial side to minimize the laxity in the after healing as you see here i am inserting the guide wire over there and with the guide wire i am inserting the screw over there it was done almost and you can see that final tibial side and also you can see the arthroscopic view of the final taut ACL.